Hi everyone, we're back in the workshop for another build. This time, it's a classic. A classic, a favorite, if you will. We're gonna be looking at the wind tube. Now, who doesn't love the wind tube? At about 12 years old, it's one of the older exhibits we have at Curiosity. Ours, of course, at the museum, you put these foam kind of tinker toy objects in and they float out. But there's actually a lot of fun experimentation you can do at home with different materials. But I just, I have to say it, I have to say it again. If you like this video, please help us keep creating ways to experience Curiosity from home with a donation today. The link is below. Thank you very much. Now that that is taken care of, let's get this build started. I would love to hear in the comments what are your favorite exhibits? What might you want to see a home version of? So, hey, please comment. Let us know. Give us feedback. It would be super interesting because I do have some other ideas. But anyway, let's get down to building the wind tube. Okay, so let's take a look at what it takes to put together a wind tube. The heart of the wind tube, the fan. This can be purchased from your favorite mega home delivery product vendor. Um, the beauty of this one is this feature. The fact that I can angle this completely flat is a huge advantage. I'm not gonna lie. Now, could you use a different fan? Absolutely. You might have to get a little creative if your fan can't do this. This just makes it so easy because you have, you know, the intake, if you will, and then the output at the top. I've also found that this particular fan, uh, which is from Lasco, has a pretty straight collimated airstream. It's pretty ideal for a small wind tube. So anyway, so that's the fan. Uh, oh, it's cool too, it's got a remote. So, you know, if your kids are having too much fun or they're learning too much about like, you know, aerodynamic properties, you can say, hey kids, that's enough. And then you just turn it off. And then we've got the structure of the tube. I'm gonna be using the 12 inch Broider you. And these are just convenient. They, you know, they're circles so, and they're wood. So it's, you know, just convenient. And then you're gonna need something to make the tube. So what I have here, this is cake collar material for bakers. And because it's only eight inches wide, I'm gonna have to splice it with packing tape into a larger sheet. And then there will need to be some support, something that supports the bottom of the tube so you have a space to put objects in it and it connects to the fan body. For that, little strips of wood. Now I was thinking about this and I was thinking, oh, the perfect strips of wood would be these, paint stir sticks, which you can get for free at home improvement stores. And um, I'm gonna be using a lot of tapes, possibly some screws and fasteners as well, but these are kind of, this is kind of the main, the main material. So, uh, Let's get going. It's time to make the tube. So we're going to uh, be cutting these. My work table here from where my table saw starts. Oh, it's actually 48 inches. That's plenty long. I mean, I think a four foot wind tube is more than enough. I might make it even a little shorter. And whoa, look at this. The table is, is just under 27 inches. That's awesome. So this work table is a great almost template for me to make a plastic sheet if I just overhang it a little bit. So I'm gonna get some scissors. I'm gonna get packing tape, clear packing tape for sealing up boxes and uh, maybe a utility knife and start turning these strips of plastic into sheets. So I'm gonna probably switch over to time-lapse mode so we can kick this into high gear. So moving on to making the tube. So we have this plastic sheet now, effectively. Again, it's more floppy than I would like. The tubes we have at the museum, when you roll them, they're pretty rigid, so they have a lot of structure on their own. So this is gonna be an interesting challenge. I'm gonna try to use the hoops themselves as sort of a form and try to get this going into a tube. Now, if I have to add additional structure, I'll add it with some more wood sticks or something like that. So we're switching back over to time-lapse and try to turn this 
sheet into a cylinder, basically. So let's get going. I'm pretty impressed at how cake collars made this tube. I mean, I made the sheet, but in the end, after I started putting the embroidery hoops together, they seemed to add so much rigidity and strength to it that I didn't tape the seam. I just let it lap over itself, and the outer rings are compressing the inner rings on the embroidery hoops, and I'm just kind of taping them in place with blue tape. Now, I mean, this thing is pretty good. Now, the next thing to figure out, we're engineering on the fly here, is the braces to the fan body. So that's the next thing I'm going to be looking at. Might have to cut some material on yield table saw and get something going for that. So that's the next step. Tubes ready. And I gotta say, I'm not the only one who's excited about this. My son walked in and saw this thing. As you might guess, familiar with the exhibit at Curiosity, he's excited to test this out. So uh, hopefully we'll be uh, getting to that testing portion soon because that's the best part, right? I cut some sticks. These are three sticks at uh, 24 inches long. And the reason I made them so long because there's only about a four inch gap between the bottom of the tube and the fan body is I want them to be in contact with at least three of the hoops. <laughs> Give away all my secrets, all my fabrication secrets. I will tell you at Curiosity in the exhibit workshop, we love double-sided tape. This stuff is amazing. This, this is called Killer Red. You can't just get it anywhere. It's kind of an industrial thing. It can actually replace screws and fasteners. It's so strong. So this is another version of it. Uh, this is called VHB. It stands for Very High Bond. This is kind of um, a little bit thicker. I'm gonna be using VHB tape to attach these to the hoops, and we're gonna hope that that's strong enough without any additional screws or fasteners. I'm gonna be attaching those. We'll kick it back over to one last time lapse, I think, and then we'll be ready to mount the tube to the fan. <laughs> sided tape did not disappoint. Um, so that worked well for that. However, I realized as I take this now that I have my standoffs, because of that, I'm not gonna rely on the double-sided tape to hold it to the fan body. Instead, I'm gonna put some screws. I have a sheet metal style screw, should be able to go into the plastic of the fan body. The other thing you'll notice is once the weight of this tube is on here, this hinge starts to become not stiff enough to prevent the fan from wanting to topple. So I'm probably gonna put some screws through the base into the side of the fan housing just to kind of lock it in this orientation. If I ever want to reverse any of this so that it could be just used as a regular old fan, I can do that again. Just take the screws out and it should be fine. So that's the next step. I'm gonna try to get some detail shots of, of me putting this together and yeah, making these last few steps before it's ready for testing time, which is to say playtime. So let's get this going.
I've, I got two drill bits I'm using. First hole is a pilot hole. I'm just doing that to reduce the risk of cracking the plastic housing. That's my pilot drill. Then I do a clearance hole in the wood standoff with a larger diameter drill bit. Go here. That prevents the wood from splitting. It's just being extra safe. Avoiding any unforeseen disasters. So I think we're ready to put the screw into the hinge on the stand here to prevent this from tilting. So I'm gonna use my pilot drill bit, smaller diameter one, and I think these, these are what I have been using. It's actually a laugh screw is what they call this, kind of has a washer built in. Might be a bit short, have some longer ones. I'm gonna go ahead and send a drill bit to the right of this hinge point into the fan body. This connect is kind of a set screw, and I'm, I'm not going to clearance that hole out. Let me see what happens if I just tighten this down as is, and kind of let that point of the screw act as a stabilizer. I don't think there's anything in my way, like, you know, I'm, I'm being careful to check and make sure that fan blade's clear and stuff, that I'm not, like, putting a screw in so far that, that it's going to, um, be an interference hazard for the the fan blades. So, okay, all the way into the fan housing. We'll see how this goes. We'll check the clearance. Want to be really careful not to. Cause like a dangerous situation. That feels pretty good. Just gonna repeat that on the other side. Plenty of clearance, plenty of clearance. I mean, there's no concern over, the fan blades are quite inside the actual inner diameter of this body. There's no risk of any interference issues. So I think we're safe. And I think what we have here is a complete wind tube. So like that, we have a complete wind tube. I mean, how awesome is this? In just a little bit of time with the right materials, we were able to put together a little replica of a classic Curiosity exhibit. So let's uh, let's give it a test run here. I'm gonna pop this on. Now the fan has three settings. There's a lot of great inquiry-based activities you can do with this. You know, set out different objects. You can ask your kid how they think the different objects are gonna fly. Lighter objects, heavier objects, but often some of the surprising things are objects with the right amount of surface area coffee filter papers, muffin papers. I mean, whoop, here it comes back. These are great too, because they, they fall nicely. So when they come out, they'll come right back down in a really nice way. So there's a lot of really fun experimentation. You can use pipe cleaners, attach little weights, make kind of parachute shapes, paper helicopters, all kinds of cool stuff you can do with this. The one thing I do want to say, absolutely, absolutely have to supervise kids with these. At Curiosity for the exhibit version, we've gone through a lot of measures with a safety protective cabinet that keeps anything from intruding into the fan blades. With this, it's still a fan, so absolutely needs adult supervision to make sure things don't enter into the fan body. If you try to recreate something like this, watch your kids when you're doing it. So. But other than that, we're gonna take this in to our test subject, my son, and uh, have some fun with it. <laughs> what do you think? What about if I do this? I don't know, try it. Here, we can turn the fan up. Turn it up more. Let's give it so That's full power.
Oh, there's other fun things for sure. Good question How about though. This? Oh, what's that do, right? Paper cup. Oh, yeah. What do you think the paper cup's gonna do? Ooh, nice one. <laughs> Wait, we're not gonna fly that. Yeah, but you could make something with that. Try this coffee filter paper. Look how it falls down. It falls down in a fun way, too. You want to yeah. try another one? Let's try all of them. Do you think the whole stack will fly? Yeah. Try it. See what happens. Oh, it does. Whoop. <laughs> but it, <laughs> did it fall faster? Yeah. And yeah, there's these, too. Ooh, some more. You what can... are these? Cupcake wrappers? Yeah, exactly. Let's try one. Whoa. No. <laughs> oh. Here, try a whole bunch of them. Try a whole bunch Here, of them? Here, grab that one. Sure. It's like, whoa! It's still a part. Let's try some napkins. Ooh, whoa, that's so that, silly. That had a silly flight, huh? It yeah, kinda, that's... Whoa! Oh! <laughs> it's stuck to the ceiling. <laughs> Okay, so back in the workshop, the thing was a hit. It was hard to pry it away, but I just was thinking I have some old window screen and I really would like to enclose this bottom just to keep uh, objects from getting pulled in just as a safety feature. So to do that, I'm gonna use some, like I said, a piece of old window screen that I've got. I found this pizza pan that's like just the right diameter to make a screen cover that I'll be able to put underneath and kind of fold up and tape around to prevent objects from being pulled in. So I'm gonna use that as my template. Uh, oh, this packing paper from when the fan was shipped to me. I'm gonna put that underneath. Let this go around. This is like a white grease pencil thing. We will clean that because uh, I left some grease pencil on the edge. Okay, so there's the circle on the screen. Actually, I'm not going to use the knife. I'm going to go ahead and just use scissors. The fiberglass window screen is good for this because it, uh, you know, it's softer, more flexible, pliable, and if you use like aluminum window screen, there might be sharp pointy wires and things. But I have to kind of dart it, so which I mean, you know, cut little slots around the edge so that there's almost tabs that can fold up and then I'll put some tape to secure it in place. So I'm gonna do that really quick and then we should have a pretty safe wind tube. Okay, so another successful build. The wind tube has the screen on the bottom, which I think makes it a much better design. And who would have thought we could build a wind tube with just some cake collar material, embroidery hoops, a fan, some hardware, some tape, the window screen, and there you have it. Thanks again for watching. Please help us creating science exhibits and zoo programs you can enjoy at home with a donation today. Again, that link is below. Thanks for chipping in. And thanks for watching. We got more builds coming. Hope to see you tuning in again. Thanks.